Good morning, viewers. Thank you all for joining us for the fourth episode of our program, CIT Transition and You. Today, we are here to discuss um, the title of this episode, which is about the place of the Joint Tax Board in tax administration and tax practice harmony in Nigeria. The place of the Joint Tax Board, JTB, in tax administration and tax practice harmony in Nigeria. And um, we meet today to discuss, to do elaborate justice to this, to get to input views and position and commentaries is uh, Mr. Innocent Ohagwa. Um, Mr. Innocent Ohagwa is the Deputy Vice, Pre is the Deputy Vice President, DVP of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Um, Mr. Ohagwa, you are welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you very much for the yeah, opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. If you notice, um, um, we've gone to the President, the Vice President, and um, honor the demands to go through you um, before we go um, to the public. CIT and Taxation and You is a program where we discuss taxation. The purpose is to develop the profession and also to develop um, tax in other ramifications from the point of view of all our viewers. And these viewers are not just tax professionals like ourselves. We have the lay taxpayers at the bottom. We have the, and the lay, some are ignorant, zero knowledge, some are a little bit informed. Right, then we have the informed, then we have the tax professionals like ourselves, we have the tax administrators, we have the federal government agency and the like. So this program is for all of these categories of people. So for this purpose, um, we will not be going to the technicalities, right? <laughs> we'll start from the you know from the basement and then build up. And um, that is the concept, that is the idea, that is the vision behind CITN tradition and you, the you includes everyone. So thank you once again for joining us um, thank you. on this program. So I want to talk about the play, the summary of this um, title is um, the Joint Tax Board, JTB. What is their place in tax administration and tax practice harmony in Nigeria? So let me ask you, uh, Mr. Deputy Vice what is the Joint Tax Board? Who are they? What do they do? Thank you very much for this question. And I welcome all the viewers and thank all of us for the opportunity given me to you know, act in this capacity. Um, it's interesting. Uh, JTB Joint Tax Board is a key stakeholder, partner, in tax administration in Nigeria. And um, before going into uh, definitional terms, I need to go back a little bit historical. OK, that would be interesting. <laughs> historical. Uh, this JTB Joint Tax Board first found itself into the tax law literature in 1961. And in 1961, through the Income Tax Management Act, that was the act that takes care of individuals and you know, both at the regions and you know, the Federal Capital Territory. This section made it possible for this body to be incorporated into the tax law. And via various amendments from 1961, from 1961 to date, if you go to section 86 of the Personal Income Tax Act, the Joint Tax Board, the establishment, what it's supposed to do is clearly stated, but in a nutshell, Joint Tax Board is an umbrella organization that have the state and federal revenue services. In Nigeria today, we have the federal land revenue service at the federal level. We have the state internal revenue service and the FCT, um, Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. Apart from these statutory members, considering the dynamism 
and tax administration. Other institutions of government okay. and prostitutes yes. are also co-opted to participate in this body called Joint Task Board. And some of those bodies are representative of Federal Minister of Finance, um, Nigerian Customs Service, okay. Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission representative, Chartered Institute of Taxation, Road Safety, and a representative of Nigerian Governors Forum. Okay, okay. Is also there to observe the proceedings. So, in a nutshell, it is an umbrella organizations that have all the revenue agencies, both at federal and the state levels, with other co-opted parties to ensure that the issue of tax administration is holistically and synergistically you know, handled. Wow, thank you so much. So we can see the net is um, a broad one. The JTV covers so so uh my Mr. DVP, um thank you for that. What does the JTB do? Or oh, you you went historical, each man, then we have the Peter, then the amendment in 2004 and 2011 and all of that. Even the FRS is and so what is the core role? What does the JTB do? From the perspective, whether you're a taxpayer or you're a tax administrator. Or what is their role? And what are the, in the event of our time, what have they extended into for our viewers time to get a fuller handle on this? Um, the core roles, I still need to make reference to uh, Personal Income Tax Act under Section 869, identify five core functions. Okay, okay. These five core functions are as follows. One is to exercise and perform duties that are expressly stated in the Personal Income Tax Act. These duties and functions stated in company, uh, Personal Income Tax Act and other duties that the individual states or members of that body could from time to time present to the body for decision making. The second core role and function of the JTB is to exercise and perform duties following the statutory enactment by federal government imposing tax on companies' income or companies' profit, with also the permission of the minister, or as expressly stated in the Federal Inland Revenue Service uh, Act. The third core function of Joint Task Board is to use its best endeavors to ensure promotion or uniformity in tax administration and incidence on individuals. It has also a function to advise the federal government on double taxation agreements double taxation arrangement with countries, and also the rates of capital allowances, and any other duties like amendment to PETA to provide an input into the amendment of Personal Income Tax Act. The fifth, and not the least, is to impose his decision on matters of procedure and regulation inter interpretation of the Personal Income Tax Act you know, on 
member states, the state's internal revenue on issues that may from time to time arise. Apart from these five core functions, JTB you know, also carries out other mediatory harmonizing roles, which uh, could be brought on the table by the individual states and federal that makes up the body. So any matter that is you know, brought to the attention of the board by the members will be handled. So those are in a nutshell the role of joint task board. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. DVP. You know, um, you, uh, I was uh, reading out those rules. I was writing them okay. sequentially. The top point you mentioned, um, you know, using his, um, using his best endeavor, yes. you know, in the promotion of uniformity, yes. you know, on issue about, um, um, you know, uh, on various issues that cut across uh, various state internal revenue services. So, Mr. DVP, I ask you, what is your opinion or what was the position on the residency question for a taxpayer who lives or prays from more than one state in Nigeria? And um, you know, there's this issue of a um, principal place of residence, right? As contained in our personal income tax act, right? And the one of our individual, I live here. But we have a case now where I live in Abuja, for example. I live in Enugu, for example. I have um, businesses functioning in Enugu, not something passive. I mean something major. I'll put in FCT. I'll put somewhere in Kaduna and all that. So it is possible that the taxpayer, even for my tax consultant, right, um, or practitioner, they come across this issue of trying to validly, validly, you know, file my account in such a way that I won't, I'm not going to have an issue. But the, the reality is that some of this, um, um, this multiple, multiple residents, multiple in quotes, Right, may cause some difficulty or challenges for such a tax to um, peacefully comply with the provisions of the law. So, what is your take on the issue of this um, um, residency where someone actively resides, you know, in more than one state of the federation? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the concept of residence in the context of your question. We need to throw light on the categories of individual taxpayers you are making reference to. Okay. The question you need to ask first is that, is the individual earning an income? Okay. Or is he a retiree whose only income is pension? <laughs> or is the individual sources of income only on end income? What I mean by on end income, something like dividend. Those income that you know that you, you don't have personal effort. You know, it just come in, you sit where you are and it's coming. So we need to determine, or is it doing business? Okay. You know, so okay. We will take it one after the other. Let's start with a resident whose source of income is only pension. Or is not doing any other work, but he receives on end income, like dividend, interest, etc. Okay. Those categories of taxpayers, their residency is where they live. Okay, where they live. Where they live. Irrespective of where the income is accruing no, from no, within no, Nigeria. No, no, no. It's where they live. <laughs> okay. If the source of income is only pension or on end income, the jurisdiction of that particular taxpayer will be where he's living. The second category is where you are doing one trade business or whatever, vocation, uh, vocation yeah, yeah. as a source of living. Your residence will be where that business is derived. 
that place where the location is. It could also happen that someone is working in a branch okay. or in an OEA platform or operational site of a construction company or any other type of installation. Okay. Such a person will be liable to tax where that business is located. And it must be noted that provided that the number of employees in that operating site are up to 50. Okay. So the relevant tax authority that will tax one who is, you know, in more than one state, we used to define it as a principal place of residence. You know, so the principal place of residence for a pensioner is where he's living. Okay. For an end income person is where he's living. For someone who is working, is that place that is nearest to where the, the business is located. I think in a nutshell, this is okay. how you you handle it. Okay. Um, do you have any idea mm. as to, uh, you know, okay, I work in Lagos, yes. right? But I live in Ogun State. Yes. <laughs> so my weekends, right, my domestic affairs, my the infrastructural comfort, security, and all of that are provided to me personally by the government of Ogun State. And I work in Lagos, right? Flowing from what you just said. Um, uh, you know, how, how does such a person, how does such a person um, comply, right, with his tax obligation when it comes to I need the tax plan certificate, and probably it is demanded by the state government, and I'm brandishing one from Lagos State, and maybe somebody is raising an eyebrow, or maybe it is me as in Lagos State, and I'm, brand, I'm, I'm brandishing that of Ogun State, you know. Uh, how, how is such result? What, the, what place does JTB, because you mentioned the composition the other time. Is there a table where matters like this are discussed by DDP? Where this interstate, because uh, we started with the code of residency. Somebody having multiple residents across Nigeria. When it comes to tax clearance, what does the person do? What is valid? What is acceptable? To give clarity to the innocent taxpayer who is only economically working, you know, to get back. What was your take on this, thank, Mr. DVP? Thank you very much. Apart from Lagos and the Ugo State, we also have that in Abuja. Okay. SCT and Nasarawa State. <laughs> okay, I'm in Lagos. So, 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 okay, I get you. Um, yes. One is that the provision of the law is uh, where you are a resident. So if you are living in Ugo State and you are working in Lagos, your tax should go to the state where you are living because it is based on residence. If you are working in Lagos and you are living in the state, the same thing, if you are working in Abuja and you live in Nasrawa state, your tax should go to Nasrawa state. That is the rule on residence. But where there are disagreements, the states could go to JTB. Okay. And JTB, in its uh, normal way of handling issues, will deliberate and then take a decision. And they will be guided by also the provisions of the tax uh, law or personal income tax and experiences from states, participating states, okay. and they will uh, resolve the matter. However, you find out that at times, even the states like Lagos and Ogun may not need to go to JTB. They may okay. even resolve it among okay, themselves. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. the issue of uh, JTB intervening, you know, uh, will not come to play, but paraventure, the matter is taken to JTB. JTB will handle it uh, in 
appropriate way by ensuring that the provisions of PETA you know, is complied with. Thank you. Yeah, my DVP, if, um, from the perspective of the taxpayers and our tax practitioners, our members and the rest, administratively, administratively, how is, um, I, I mean, um, physical administration, mm -hmm. how is JT being structured? As in, um, where do you locate them? What institution or government in a state, um, or maybe an FCT? Where do you go? This complainer, for example, I do not have a tax consultant. I should have. Right, with the level where we are now, yes. we advise everyone to have a tax consultant to guide them through everything they do. But I want to incident a complaint about something. How do I practically go? Where, where do I go to? Yes, um, it's um, every state has state internal revenue service, hmm? and even within the JTB Act itself, uh, within the Personal Income Tax Act, Section 92 provided for joint revenue committee. You know, okay. that is supposed to enforce decisions of the joint task board. Okay, for mm -hmm. each state. Yes, for each state. <laughs> okay, and the nice. chairman of that joint committee is the executive chairman of the state internal revenue service. It has also other members like the chairman of the uh, revenue local government revenue committee you know, it has director from local government uh, bureau. Also have observers from uh, RANFAC and um, road safety, amongst others. So when there's an issue, the task consultant or the taxpayer can approach the state internal revenue service in the state okay. and such matter will be resolved. If it is SCT, it will also approach um, the, the chairman of the SCT Internal Revenue Service, lay the complaint, and the matter will be resolved. For eventual, they were unable to resolve. They can write the complaint and send to the, uh, the Joint Task Board, which is headquarters is in Abuja. And coincidentally, the executive chairman of FRS is also the chairman of the Joint Task Board. And the matter will be taken up from that point, and it will be uh, amicably resolved. Because each time, the Joint Task Board you know, tries to promote harmony peace among the various, you know, tiers and uh, uh, people, task consultants who have issues, you know, to resolve when they are unable to resolve it at the state level. Well, um, you see, uh, my DVP, you've um, offloaded a whole lot of knowledge and yes. experience here. Look, I'm sure not too many of us know about you know you know we read you know people read books people read newspapers gazettes newsletters and the like but the practical application process now yes. i have an issue yes. and i want to deal with it where do i go you know you walk into a building you're asking is it the first floor is it the second floor okay. how do i write the letter who acknowledges which okay. floor how do i follow up these are the practical field issues people go to when they need to get solution okay. to the problem. So, so you've, um, you've actually offloaded a whole lot, okay. you know, in that regard. Thank you so much. Because I was learning personally. Okay. I was, um, you know, following through as you, you know, gave out all of those uh, details. Um, I want to ask, this is um, kind of um, um, prescriptive in a way, right? Uh, we know you are not joint tag, you are not speaking on our behalf. But we are looking at the way the taxation provision can be developed. And also the taxpayers, you know, can be inspired to self-comply without anyone coming after them. So I want to ask, um, what role should JTB play in ensuring uniformity? You scratched part of the explanation Why, you know, clarifying the point you just raised. So, but in a um, in, uh, in more specific form, what role do you think JTB should play in ensuring uniformity? In personal income tax administrative provisions of various states, we resort to the multiple residency. You know, what role should they play to pursue uniformity? 
among various sources and RSS. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Even before the coming of the National Task Policy in 2012, JTB means periodically and issue notices, uh, communique, communique um, press release, and various information for people's awareness okay. to bridge areas of clarifications in the task law. When you are talking about multiple residency, more often than not, if the state is able to resolve the matter, there will be no issue as standing, there will be no issue to be taken to JTB. Even after it has been resolved, on meetings of JTB, they focus on a lot. Okay. Compliance of the taxpayers, the stakeholders involved in the tax administration chain, taxpayer, tax consultant, you know, um, tax practitioners, and to see how the job can go on ethically okay. by ensuring okay. that taxpayers pay what they owe and that the process is simplified enough for them to comply. Mm. You know, even in the areas of rates of taxes, to ensure that there's harmony in them. And from time to time, if there are areas of disagreement, it's an opportunity for JTB to resolve. And there have not been issues that is taken to JTB that is not handled you know, to the satisfactions of the parties. So for me to summarize, we are talking about disagreement at the state level relating to multiple residency, you know, I repeat that multiple residency occurs more often than not between states that are adjacent to each other, and also some who claims to be doing businesses from various states that are not within the same place. But JTB in this initiative has brought the issue of central database and uh, tax identification number. When that project is completed, now it may be very difficult for one to use excuses that, oh, I'm not in Lagos, I'm in Abuja, or I'm in, in, in Kaduna. So the tax identification number and the tax more taxpayer database, you know, when it is brought to speed, you will find out that these issues, uh, you know, will be resolved more uh, easily than uh, it is now. Wow, wow. Well, thank you so much, my, uh, my deputy vice president. Thank you. I'm first seeing you by asking you too many questions. You bear with me. <laughs> we are going back to our audience. Um, um, you've been listening. Um, we apologize for a little hitch along the way for those of you on Zoom platform. We want to take your questions, commentaries, observations, and also, um, you know, recommendations on the way forward. We're talking about the place of the Joint Tax Board in um, tax administration and tax practice harmony in Nigeria. So, um, please, when you're muted, try to squeeze in all you have to say within one minute. Every single thing you have to say. Um, so, we go to those. So please, and embrace your palm. Use the, you know, the icon, the palm icon on your Zoom platform to indicate that you have um, um, a comment to pass on. So, um, my producers, uh, what do we have? Do we have anyone? Um, okay, please, um, use the icon when you do. Uh, so, let's go to the message. You have some chats. Uh, we may need to respond to. Can we um, open up? Let's um, look at. Um, okay, keep scrolling gently. Uh, keep scrolling. Yeah, keep scrolling. Uh, those are commendations. Thank you for your kind words. 
Thank you for for all what has been said. Okay, lively. Uh, yeah, keep scrolling. Let's see. Okay, lively. Those are. Can you scroll for us? Yes. Go ahead. The recommendations, commendations, commendations. Um, okay, for now. Yeah, those are commendations. Um, keep scrolling. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen, so don't mind where I'm positioned. I'm looking at the screen to um, take note. Um, um, I think someone uh, I've been informed that someone has. Um, so, so, can you please unmute? Unmute the person, let the person speak. Your name quickly, um, then, then you go straight. Thank you. Good morning, my GDP, and uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Good, Sam. Good morning. Uh, I'm coming from I'm, yeah. I'm coming from a pretty uh, different angle uh, to uh, the convers conversation this morning. Uh, I it is good for us as an institute to ad address some of the issues that goes on in with the the, the tax and traitors. And uh, one of the most important one now that is uh, that is uh, actually telling hard on the taxpayer is the way the tax promise computes the uh, the penalties and interest. It's a very difficult it's a very diff difficult thing which uh, I think we as an institute should take up with the FRS and whoever is in tax or the tax promise should address that area because how can you pay a penalty that is now so much? For you to bear, and you, you cannot uh, you cannot do anything about it because they use compounded interest. They use uh, they, they compound the penalties, compound the, the interest, which is is crazy. So I need I, I think we uh, as an institute should look at it, uh, talk to our lawyers, and see how we can uh, um, uh, wade into it because it's telling hard on the taxpayer. Some of them are some of them are dropping their businesses and registering other businesses. Thank you very much, uh, my DDP, and uh, Maoga at the top. I salute you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Elijah Siano. Thank you. So, your points are noted yeah. on the issue with tax format. Okay. That will be addressed, but the institute is noting. We go back to Mr. Timothy showroom. Mr. Timothy showroom, are you there? You may unmute and speak. Good morning, sirs. My DPP mm -hmm. and the Ohans. Well done. It's a not. It's an honor to connect. I'll be very brief. I stand on the system protocol. Sorry. JTB is a connecting point between the federal revenue and the state in uh, internal revenues. And the federal revenue is standing for the federal government. Why is state internal revenue is working for the state? But they need harmony. They need to come together. But there are still a lot of things to be done. They are trying, but not yet. What do I mean? If you take a limited company uh, to state internal revenue and the generating, the federal revenue will not take it from you. And at the same time, the joint task board is now saying they are connecting both the federal and the states. They still need to work on that. Of course, what I see in practice is that there is a lot of money on the table that the state internal revenue is leaving on, a, on, on, on taking. Because there are not to be a, a, a synergy between the, the, the financial statement of, submitted to the federal internal revenue and the information submitted to the state internal revenue of a, a client so that they can put it together. You will discover that most clients will submit a different uh, information to federal internal revenue and will submit it different information to state internal revenue but if all these things are harnessed together then the state government can generate more money from there it should not be so so the jet toy task board is, and let us see the effectiveness of all this synergy between the federal government and the state government thank you for let me Call me. Thank you, sir. That's my position. Thank you, Mr. Timothy. Your points are clear, very noted. Let's go to Dr. Kennedy Wundu. Dr. Kennedy Wundu, if you can hear us, you may meet and speak. And I'm trying to see what you can do within one minute. Thank you, Dr. Iwundu. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, there's an issue that needs to be resolved. The state, some state internal revenue service are still charging 
consumption tax to some of our clients. And in the past, we have uh, discussed this in that consumption tax is still the, the same thing as value added tax. So if the FRS collects 7.5% value added tax, the state internal revenue service in some of the states will come to the same client and collect consumption tax. There are so many court pronouncements on this matter. And we expected that the state internal revenue service we should stop collecting consumption tax. Uh, I believe the JTB, uh, we should use the JTB as a platform where FRS will discuss with the other state internal revenue service to see the, the end of this consumption tax collection. Uh, that is exactly what I want to say because some of us are in the field, we are practicing and we are seeing so many infractions going on. And uh, some of these things lead to what people complain as uh, double taxation. So that is what I want to say. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kennedy Wundo. Your points are noted. Um, let me quickly hop over to the other person, SCTIRS. Your name was not stated. Please unmute and introduce yourself and um, make your input. There's a Zoom user. Okay, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you unmute yourself. You just unmuted again. Yes, you may speak up, please. And we can't hear you. Is it your audio or something? Okay, let's go ahead to the next person. Um, there's someone. Um, please, you may need to introduce yourself because uh, your device name is showing. Um, you may speak. Introduce yourself and speak. Good morning, my DVP. Good morning, sir. My name is uh, A.B. Ahmed from Kano. Oh, okay. I, well, want to, well done, sir. I want to appreciate your very good uh, contribution to this all-important uh, discussion. Uh, my concern is with itinerant workers. Yes. Those who don't stay in one place, they move from this place to that place. Uh, and uh, because of the way we keep data, how do you establish the number of days that they have spent in different locations using the JTB? Because the states are losing a lot of resources and creating, uh, sorry, creating a lot of confusion here and there. I don't know what JTB is doing to be able to address this challenge, particularly considering the informal sector uh, tax administration that we are, we've not been actually been able to handle very well. Thank you very much for this contribution. We are actually being educated by a lot of uh, uh, information you are giving us. May God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, my dear brother, you may want to respond quickly. Okay. So it's to, to this one. Yeah, this is specific issues. Oh, okay. That we're oh, oh, okay. Um, thank you, sir, uh, for, for that comment. You, you see, um, one thing on about uh, itinerant workers. Uh, this uh, aspect of personal income tax act that um, at times is very very difficult, you know, uh, to implement. And you know, when laws are made, some of them are of relative ease. Some of them are in the books, uh, pending when the opportunity comes. But determining who is an itinerant worker and trying to determine the number of days. You know, before you can take something to JTP, you must also have the capacity to track such movement and the number of days. So for me to go straight, it's, um, the, my advice is that if the relevant tax authorities can deal with those they physically know, the ones that are around, you know, uh, the huge informal sector, you know, that have a lot of compliance gap, they Oh, and then before coming to internal workers, you know, then a lot would have been achieved. But this really aspect of the law that is quite uh, difficult, you know, that for you to determine the number of days and how you can track, you know. So um, that is the challenge. But if anybody makes uh, a particular input to JTB. JTB will consider it, you know, but the issue is that you will not even have the data or information to be able to, you know, identify such category 
of uh, taxpayers. I'm not thinking of bringing them to TaxNet. So I don't know if um, okay. I'm able to address no, no, that. You know, you know, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated area. Yeah. Trying to have that data to track. Yeah. For you to even to come to JTB and begin yeah. to say, so these are the issues we're having. Yes. This guy was here for 80, for 184 days. Yes. And I'm crossed over to here, stayed them, um, um, wonder and um, 79 and all of that. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we are going, we're still going to come back to our audience. Oh. We're still going to come back to our audience. Let's um, see, I'm squeezing one more question to our deputy vice president. Okay. Um, the president, you know, I used an expression the other time. I said, when someone or a group of people are not part of what you do, they tell you, you know, you guys, mm -hmm. you guys is like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not there, I'm helpless, you take decision, it's binding, you know. So I'm asking, yes. apart from your quarterly periodic meeting, mm -hmm. At JTB, we have the FRS, um, the State and Revenue Services, and all of the other government agencies you mentioned, road safety here and there, right. and all that. Don't do you not think that it's going to be helpful for clarity, for ease, for simplicity, and for inclusiveness? Do you not think there is need for a regular for, for there is need for a regular fora where JTB, you know, meets with tax practitioners? Taxpayers. So it's not about your streamline the meeting about administrators. You almost time when you say you meet, like me, we know it's administrators that are meeting, right? Other than federal and state administrators. But I think about our, 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 our tax um, you know, practitioners, consult, and the taxpayers themselves. You Recording in progress. A regular fora, you know, like a town hall meeting, like a town hall meeting. Do you not think it's going to actually, you know, break those gaps? of um, misinformation, disinformation, um, collaborative inefficiency, and other frustrations that, um, that hang around the value chain, service value chain. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, you see, uh, JTB is not a revenue agency. <laughs> JTB is just an umbrella of revenue agencies. So uh, they, they are meeting does not need to take the pattern of a revenue agency. What usually in practice is that at the state levels, they carry out sensitization, periodic engagement with their stakeholders. At federal level, they do so. Even CITN also carry out various sensitization and engagement with uh, various groups where task administrators, uh, task practitioners, and taxpayers are invited. So it is not the duty of JTB to start organizing, you know, this type of engagement at the various states and federal level and the professional institutes. They can do that because JTB is a, is a body that tries to resolve issues, you know, and retain its constitutional uh, 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 assignments, except it is brought by any of the party states who are members of that uh, organization. So to answer your question, it, it will not be proper for JTB to uh, engage in that because at the state level, they are extensively done. At federal level, they're extensively done. At professional institutes level, they're also extensively done. So all these uh, stakeholders, you know, play their own role in one way or the other. And then JTB to do their own. So in this respect, it will not be proper for JTB to. But periodically, JTB used to invite a task consultant or a practitioner to come and talk to them on an issue of common interest. Okay. You know, in this case, they don't need to invite all the consultants or all the taxpayers because each of the states there is represented and in his state, in the state, the, the taxpayers have unfettered access, the task consultants have unfettered access to uh, the, the revenue authority. That's why it's advisable that every taxpayer, you know, try to have an agent. Where you don't have an agent, you can also, you yourself, you know, can approach the tax authority directly and then the, the issues will be sorted out. 
Okay, thank you, my DVP. Let's squeeze in a commentary from um, uh, Mr. Kule Olatubosun. Um, please, one minute quickly, Mr. Kule Olatubosun, one minute quickly, please, for your input. Thank you. Mr. Olatubosun, if you okay. are there. Uh, yes. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Okay, that's fine. Uh, please, it sounds like a, a question. Regarding this uh, QC, that's a uh, qualified capital expenditure. Uh, you of recent, you know, uh, there's a directive from FRS that uh, companies will provide the uh, approval of a federal ministry for qualifying capital expenditure for the past uh, six years. But you know, what is worrisome there is that uh, these are the account that has been audited by FRS. This review has been carried out. And uh, most of the documents have been anchored. I was wondering why say that the FRA decided to start now and dig back to so much years. I'm not saying that have was not have been reviewed. I think uh, it should have been something to be done going forward. That is my concern on that. Okay. I think it's a uh, the 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 to break into that. Thank you. Okay, okay, Mr. Kuna Latubas. Yeah, we get your your point, the point you've made. And um, probably maybe in line with the direction of what we have for this program, whether the JTB may need to come in. You know, this is a part of the issue. You know, when the tax rationale feels uh, something is not right or something should be you know interjected, uh these are some of the issues that can be brought to the notice following the process you've mentioned. That very process trying to bring something to a notice. It's not just by um, doing oral um, um, complaints. Mm. So, Mr. So Lato Basun, you may need to um, um, also follow the modality um, discussed by the BDP. Let but we need to have something to add to yes. that. Um, you, you see, uh, the issue of uh, capital allowance, that letter written by FRS, did it violate any tax law? <laughs> you know, and, 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 and if if there are issues, did you raise, you know, a protest letter to the FRS? Because there are things that should be handled by the individual revenue agencies. It is only when, you know, you can come to a close that you can escalate. But if you have not given FRS the first option to even respond to why, you know, that memo was issued. I know that the, uh, the director technical or the coordinating director of the task operations group could answer, provide answers to the reason why that letter was written. But at least I know that it is in compliance with the uh, law that in the past or for some time, you know, it was not being enforced, uh, may not be accepted as you know, uh, adequate reason. However, when you meet with the FRS directly, they will be able to um, give you further reasons and then uh, explain. And if there's need for variation, they will also do so. So it's not such matter that will be taken to JTB when opportunity have not been given to FRS to defend uh, the letter it has written. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, my DBP. Um, so, uh, uh, thank you so much. We will not be able to take further um, input because of our time. We are, you know, rounding, um, you know, rounding off what we're doing here. But there's an important announcement. This is to announce to you the 2022 annual dinner and awards. 2022 annual dinner and awards of the Chartered Institute of Technology of Nigeria, holding on Friday, November 25, 2022 at the Lagoon Restaurant, Ozumbambadiwe Avenue, Victoria Island, Lagos. Um, the fee for single for an individual is 15,000 Naira, for a couple 25,000 Naira. Once again, 2022 Annual Awards of the CITN holding on Friday, November 25, 2022 at the Lagoon Restaurant, 1C Ozumbambadiwe Avenue, Victoria Island, Lagos, single 15,000 Naira, couple 25,000 naira, please um, do well to join us in this award. My DVP, as a party words, as a party words, you know, um, you know, what's the 
terms of um, assessing the, the, the performance of JTB and tax administration in Nigeria, what we have for the JTB on tax administration, tax practitioners, and the tax payers generally as we sign up? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, in my view, uh, JTB, Joint Task Board, have done very well. And um, there is still opportunity to do more, especially at the sub-national levels. There's a need for all the stakeholders' hands to be on deck because the issue of tax administration uh, in Nigeria is not only JTB that have the overall responsibility because the stakeholders will check the national tax policy. We have a group of stakeholders like government. There will be political will on the government to support harmonization of uh, taxes, uh, domestic uh, mobilization at all levels, both the states and the federal. There is also need at the sub-national level to encourage full financial autonomy and administrative autonomy. Some states are already having that, but there are many other ones that are yet to. The issue of professionalization and capacity building of the officers of the revenue service, especially at sub-national level, you know, the issue of automation should also be embraced, especially at the sub-national level, because I am aware that um, at the federal level, a lot has been done and uh, a lot of improvements have been recorded. In sub-national places like Lagos and others are also doing well, but many other states are yet to come to terms you know, to bridge the huge compliance gap between uh, the taxpayers and the current performance. The ratio of low GDP to tax ratio, you know, we need to work on that seriously through harmonization of the taxes and ensuring that um, all taxable persons, organizations, you know, perform their duty accordingly. Again, judicious use of taxpayers' resource, which uh, the media advocacy group will need to communicate to the general public on what taxes are used, you know, um, at both sub-national and national levels. All this will uh, encourage greater compliance. And then we also need to improve the training and retraining of officers of the service, especially at the state levels. And their welfare needs to be taken care of so as to encourage them to perform more because at the state level, uh, a lot needs to be done to bridge the gap of non-compliance by a large informal sector. With these few words, uh, I congratulate the uh, organizers of this program, the participants, and the JTB as an institution that has, uh, since 1961, have remained very relevant, even when there were non-existence of national tax policy. They were breaching that gap. And today, they are still doing very, very well. So I think I yeah, need to yeah, I didn't Thank you so much uh, for that um, elaborate um, closure. Thank you so much. I want to thank you warmly for coming thank you. for this episode four. Thank you. And we hope I will invite you some other time 
Um, it would be gracious again to thank join us. Then to our viewers, I want to thank you for staying with us for the past one hour. We've been discussing the place of the Joint Tax Board in tax administration and tax practice harmony in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. The next video comes up on December 1, Thursday, December 1, 2022. We look out for joining us. Thank you for your time. Good day and let's um, have a blessed working day. Bye-bye. Thank you.